Another day, another video talking about the Chicago Blackhawks in a very negative way. Last time we had spoken about the trades with Kirby Doc and Alex Dabrinkit and how the Chicago Blackhawks kind of got fleeced in those deals. We talked about the non-retentions. Is that the proper word to use? The fact that they did not retain the RFA negotiating rights to Dylan Strom and Dominic Kubelik, two very okay middle six scorers that eventually went to the market for free, even though the Blackhawks had the opportunity to keep them around and potentially trade them away to get some value out of them. And we we talked about how this was just kind of somewhat of a disaster, and even then, it's not really all too placated by the draft picks they ended up making. You have Kevin Korchinski at 7th overall with the Alex Debrinket trade, you have Connor Geeky taken, what was it, 13th overall in the Kirby Doc swap, so... Not really the best prospects coming back here. The Blackhawks have gotten a ton worse on paper. Sure, they signed Max Domi and Andreas Athanasiu, but those guys are really not going to move the needle in the same way that Debring, Ken, and Doc, and Kubelik, and Strom all work collectively. But either way, there still are parts of the Chicago Blackhawks team that are very high-paid, that are, in the eyes of many people, important hockey players, and that do have their own opinions on what's going on as well. We'd been making videos about Taves and Kane, two legends on the Chicago Blackhawks for a while now. A year ago, we made a video talking about how they're pissed off that the team is going through somewhat of a rebuild on the fly and sending away their bigger names to get younger assets, etc. And admittedly, that felt pretty short-lived because we saw the Chicago Blackhawks go out there and trade for Seth Jones right away after, sending away a draft pick and Adam Boquist, and it was a pretty big deal, especially when they gave Seth Jones a big deal as well. It's been all over the place here. And I know you could say, oh, it's Davidson versus Bowman. There is an entire difference in philosophy between these two guys. And I get that. That's fine. It's just, it's really tough to be on the Blackhawks side after everything came out with Kyle Beach, after everything came out with the way the team was handling their roster and how they traded away players and let guys walk for free, even though they had the rights to negotiate with them and they just didn't use it. So it's very questionable, to say the least, where Chicago has gone the past few years months, I guess you could say, even with the Korchinski and Connor Geeky acquisitions. But today we're going over an article talking about Jonathan Taves, Captain Sirius himself, on his Blackhawks future and beyond. Trade, free agent, retirement, or rebuild? This article was published on The Athletic by Mark Lazarus on July 26th, but because it's on The Athletic, it's paid for content, we're not going to go ahead and screenshot material from this. We'll leave a link in the description if you do have The Athletic and you want to read it. Instead, we're going over onto NBCSports.com and taking a look at their Chicago segment of the website, because what they did on this piece is they summarized the quotes from Jonathan Taves in the Lazarus Athletic article. This is free to play free to play, free to view for anybody who does not have any subscription or whatever, so we're going to go ahead and screenshot from this article instead. The piece was published by Ryan Taylor, and you can go ahead and click on the link in the description as well if you want to read this one. Here's what Jonathan Taves says about the idea of a rebuild. It does not sound appealing to him at all. Now, I will go out there and say that that headline, the title of the article, seems a little bit more misleading than I would like it to. It seems a bit more confrontational and standoffish than what the full quote feels like. This is what the article says. In an interview with The Athletic, Jonathan Taves said this about the rebuild. At the end of the day, we're talking about a five-plus year process, according to Kyle. So that part of it doesn't sound appealing to me at all. I can't speak for Patrick Kane, but I definitely feel that the amount of turnover our team has gone through every single year these last three or four years, that's where it gets really, really draining and exhausting. You have a guy like Alex Dabrinkit, who was under Kaner's wing, and I like to think that Kirby Doc and I have bonded in some ways, too. And out they go. Out the door. Over and over. We've seen that turnover. I'm learning to be more patient, but there's no doubt that timeline is pretty daunting and pretty exhausting to think about. So I'm not going to sit here and say what I'm going to do or what the future holds for me, because I really don't know. And this full quote kind of does a few things here. Firstly, it does express the frustration that Jonathan Taves has with the consistency, or lack thereof, I should say, as to how the Blackhawks have been handling their moves over the past few years. He's expressing his frustration that guys that he felt were pretty important parts of the team have left. But he also is saying that, hey, he's learning to be patient, he's trying to get on board and feel that he is a part of this team, and that the team itself has more to look forward to, 
But at the end of the day, he is still the captain of this team. He is as frustrated as he has ever been, and it's making his foreseeable future a lot less certain. But he still has the capacity to go out there and say to the media that, yeah, even though that's the plan, I personally am not too on board with it, but we'll see. The only thing he knows is that he is not a fan of the rebuild, the article says. I'm not going to say, hey, look at that. Look at how the grass could be greener on the other side. But when you go through a couple of tough seasons like this, it definitely puts things in perspective and reminds you of how good you had it when things were all clicking and the stars aligned for us. It kind of breaks your heart to think that way, to remember how crazy and how exciting it was in this city to play for these fans when we were on top. But this is a different stage in life, where the challenges are different and you do the best that you can. Now, those quotes are pretty powerful. Like, I'm not gonna lie, that's some pretty sentimental stuff that Jonathan Taves is going out there and saying right here. But at the end of the day, I mean, what exactly is something like this going to accomplish? We've seen Kyle Davidson do what it is that he wants to do and trade away guys and let go of guys and acquire other players in free agency to short one-year deals and everything, and that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles here. So for Jonathan Taves to go out there and say this, it's kind of funny because it's like, what are you going to do, trade me? If you trade me, it means I'm going to ask for a trade. It means I'm willing to get moved. Taves, being the guy who captained this team to three Stanley Cups in the 2010s, has all the right to go out there and express his frustrations with the way the team is being run. And it's funny because it's like, yeah, this is the plan that Kyle had for us. I'm just not a fan of it. This is the season we had. It was tough for all of us, and it doesn't feel any better, especially when you acknowledge what Kyle has been doing. So now that Taves is in a position of discomfort, it gets me really thinking what the heck is going to happen here, because we already saw the Patrick Kane rumors from Darren Dreger the other day as well, that we're just not really too sure as to what his party is going to go and decide, because everything that has been said so far has been speculative. But for Jonathan Taves, I mean, all the trade rumors with Kane, I feel like you could definitely say similar things about Taves. It's just, he is a lot more vocal and open to the public that, yeah, no, the way the Blackhawks are being run right now, I don't like it. So... It's interesting to see this situation unfold, especially after all the departures the team had gone through over the past few weeks here, but are Taves and Kane also going to depart this team? You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. A part of me just hopes, like, you know, I'm sort of cynical in a way. I kind of feel like, hey, I would like it if Jonathan Taves stuck around in Chicago. He stayed there, they went through another bad year, and he had even more outrageous things to say in the media. Heck, this stuff in The Athletic isn't even all too outrageous. It's pretty honest, and it's pretty sentimental. It's just, I want to see where the breaking point comes here. I mean, he's got a no-move clause. He's got control over whether or not he stays or goes, so if he sticks around in Chicago without exercising his right to move, I mean, part of that has to be his fault for staying Staying there, right? Maybe Seth Jones can go out there and spark up another controversy about whether or not he's worth the $9 million or whatever to make things even worse for the Blackhawks and their conversations about the salary cap. But talk to the comments all your thoughts about Jonathan Taves and the comments he had made. Two articles, one The Athletic, one NBC Sports, they'll both be linked in the description if you want to go ahead and check out the pieces. But I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls Line 9. And bye.